Welcome to the Drip Drops DREP Deposit Discussion. I'm Lloyd. I'll be hosting today and facilitating a bit of a discussion and an exercise as we go through and talk about uh, one very particular element of SIP 1694, the Cardano uh, governance framework that's being discussed. Uh, so today's topic is the DREP and specifically the deposit that'll have to be paid to register to become a DREP. Uh, so a quick note, the uh, this room is an open forum discussion. So if you have a comment or uh, if you have something that you'd like to add, feel free to add it and just be mindful of everyone else in the room and let other people finish what they're saying before you uh, interject your point. And otherwise, let's uh, let's enjoy the, the conversation and, and see where we can go. Uh, there's this is a we're going to output a work product from today's discussion uh, that will be sent to the SIP 1694 editors and hopefully uh, be useful in as an inclusion to uh, to complete this process. Right. To because this is an ongoing product that is that is being built as we speak. Right. This isn't finished. It's not set in stone. Uh, so anything that we say here today is still subject to change. Now, uh, I will also add that the things that I'm discussing today are as of the latest revision of the SIP that was released this week. So the uh, this does include some inf information from the most recent update. Let's get started. So first, I wanted to take a moment and I wanted to talk about the difference between a Catalyst DREP and a Cardano DREP. They are different things. So uh, the difference is a Catalyst DREP will specifically vote during one fund for however much ADA is uh, is uh, delegated to that DREP, just specific to voting for projects that are seeking funding from Project Catalyst. So it is not the same thing as a Cardano DREP. Um, in both cases, though, they're important for one thing, and that and that that is that it's a it's a way that we're building liquid democracy with Cardano, in that we are delegating our voting authority to some trusted entity, whatever that looks like, in order to uh, to hopefully improve the participation in voting. Uh, by allowing people to 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 delegate someone else so they don't have to go through the process of understanding all of the proposals on their own. Um, and if you'd like to become a DREP in Catalyst, uh, there is there was a first cohort that was created and there's there are forms available that that can be shared if you're interested in that. However, the the first cohort is closed and I'm not sure when they're accepting additional uh, people for another cohort. As far as the Cardano DREP that we're talking about today, uh, there is yet no sign up because SIP 1694 is not finished. So we got to get through uh, you know, many of these different types of exercises all throughout the community as we try and and nail down the specifics of SIP 1694 so that we can understand what it's going to take to become a Cardano DRAP. So let's talk about what the SIP says. And again, as I've mentioned today, I just want to point out one more time, this thing is under construction. So What's in there now does not have to be the finished product. That's the, the feedback is being taken from the community. And so the best thing we can do to, to mold this the way we want it is to participate in events like we're doing today. So I hope you guys, I'm glad you guys are here. Everybody else that, that, that isn't here today that's maybe watching this later, go to a workshop, go to a meeting. There's going to be lots of opportunities to help mold this, including also just participating right away in the GitHub. So find find your voice, help and participate. Um, let's move on to what a, there are actually going to be in the as of the new spec. There are two different types of DREPs. There's a predefined DREP. And the predefined DREP has one of two categories. Uh, as of right now, it's listed as abstain and as no confidence. So um, it makes it easy for you if you 
don't want to delegate your ADA to a particular person for whatever reason, then you, or a particular script, and I'll get to that in a second. If you don't want to do that, you can just abstain with your ADA. You can just you can just delegate to this abstain wallet, and and your ADA will be sidelined, uh, so it won't vote yes or no on any option. the The consequence of that, of course, is that when you abstain, you are you are implicitly agreeing with whatever the outcome is. So if something's voted up or voted down, that you're implicitly agreeing with that by abstaining. Uh, the other one's a little more interesting. It's no confidence. And that's more like, I don't believe in this system at all, and I think it needs to change. So um, it, it, there's some talk around how that could work at varying levels where if there's some percentage of wallets that are in this no confidence vote, maybe this is a little harder for the government, or maybe this can't download, you know, you, you, the DREPs can't take funds out or, you know, different things of that nature where there's, you know, where there's limitations placed upon the governing body because a certain percentage of the population uh, of Cardano that cares about Cardano is actually in that no confidence state. So it's kind of a temperature check, a temperature gauge on how the community's feeling, and that's a, I think, a, in my opinion, a good piece. But we'll, you know, we'll keep moving through it. Um, beyond those two types of predefined DREPs, the third is the registered DREP. Now that is actually, if you're planning on working in governance in Cardano, that is where you would register, just like a stake pool operator does. You would register as a DREP on the blockchain. Uh, and what we're talking about today is what is the deposit required to do that? If, for those of you that don't know, if you want to be a stake pool operator today, you have to register on the chain as a stake pool operator, and you have to pay a 500 ADA deposit to do so. So that's the, and and if you read through the, the new version of the SIP, that's what they state in the SIP specifically is that this is very similar to staking, you know, in state pool operation in that you are creating this certificate, declaring your intention to be a, in this case, a voter. But in that, you know, in that case, it's to, to run a stake pool. So that 500 ADA is in, in, in the case of the stake pool is what the deposit is. So today we're going to try and determine what deposit we think in this room is fair for a D, a D rep to have to pay in order to vote. Now, I mentioned earlier scripts and, and wallets. This is another new innovation in SIP 1694 as of the latest version. A D rep does not have to be an individual wallet held by an individual human. It can be a script address. So what that means is a few things. Um, if if the deposit needs to be accumulated across multiple people in order to have a deposit, a script could be created where if enough people put in uh, enough ADA to to register, once that ADA is there, it's registered, and then if that if that DREP chooses to leave later, those deposits are returned to each of the separate wallets. That's sort of the simplest version of what a script. Uh, D rep could be, but really, if you if you think about it, it could be way more complex, right? It could be a whole DAO, you know, that pays that deposit and then gives issues their own voting, and the the way, whatever way their vote ends up could be the way they vote on a on a particular proposal that is in uh, Cardano governance. So it's a very interesting change because it gives us a a ton more flexibility. You don't have to trust an individual. You can choose instead to trust a DAO, a corporation, a group of people who are working together that that maybe you would feel that that group together will make a stronger and better decision than any one DREP that you might delegate to. So it's a very, it's a very neat uh, innovation, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that particular part of this plays out. Um, and lastly, it does talk in the SIP about incentives, and I guess this is a little controversial. Some people are very unhappy with uh, with the idea that that there could be uh, both carrot and stick incentives involved in this process. Now, Cardano up to this point has been all carrot and no stick. And it works up to a point, but there is a point where if you don't have negative incentives, you could really have some serious problems with growing the space appropriately because you, attracting 
the right you know, people into the right places in the space, sometimes you need a negative incentive. Um, currently, the negative incentive that's listed is, is if you aren't delegated to a DREP, you can't withdraw your rewards. So you could always go to the abstain or the no confidence and then withdraw your rewards. So it's relatively easy for someone to accommodate that. But there is still, there's, you know, it's controversial. There's people that totally disagree with that, don't think it should happen at all. Some people on our team that totally disagree with that think it shouldn't happen at all. And that's fine. Um, you know, again, we're still in this process of learning and growing through it. Uh, some of the other incentives that have been uh, discussed, but not in the SIP yet, are perhaps if a DREP doesn't vote, they suffer a, a penalty for not voting. That's another interesting approach. I'm, I personally am actually for that. I think that a DREP should do what needs to be done. If you're going to, it's just like a stake pool operator needs to cycle their keys and a stake pool operator needs to keep their software version up to date and, and, and participate in that way. If you're a DREP, you need to participate. And if you don't, there should potentially be a penalty for that. It's a, you know, that's a reasonable approach. So that's the incentive uh, portion of this. And, and again, it's only, they've only touched on it so far and it's, it's touched a nerve, but we'll see how that uh, progresses. So now why are deposits required? So it is, it is a spam or attack protection for the chain. If, if everybody's a DREP, or if everybody can be a DREP without there being any deposit, then you know the, the potential exists to create wallets just for the sake of being a DREP and and building up a large number of needing to vote wallets, and then adding a ton of chain congestion by you know just just because every wallet would have to have a transaction to complete votes. So it's a it's an attack vector that if if the if the deposit is low or non-existent, that you just create lots of wallets, even if they have almost no voting power, and shove thousands and thousands of transactions on chain. So it is an important element that we have, you know, some sort of deposit. Uh, again, and with chain chain congestion, it is you know that that's really one of the main drivers here is how much can we do on chain for voting and it has to be kept to a, a pretty good limit i highly recommend pi's uh pi lanningham's uh twitch feed that he did recently because he did a twitch on like how many uh governance actions could be in you know in in the chain on a regular basis kind of did some back the envelope math he also was on space place and did some of it there so highly recommend that if you're interested in the chain congestion part of the conversation. Um, and lastly, the deposit is a tunable parameter. It is not something that's set in stone forever. So we're really like what we're going to try to say, what would the initial deposit look like? And then go from there because it's something that we can tune later. Um, now I'm going to share the link to this uh, channel right now in the, uh, or this uh, slide deck right now. And uh and then we're going to move over to a Figma board that I have, and we're going to try to do a quick exercise. But that way, you guys have the links here that are available. All right. And first things first, let me get out of there. And I've sent in the chat. That was the slides there with the links. You guys are welcome to grab that there. And then I'm also going to give a link to a Figma board, and then I'll share that Figma board out in just a second here. On, I'm going to share the screen with the Figma board. The screen here. How's everybody doing so far? I've been the only one talking today. Everybody doing okay? Fabulous. Doing great, Lloyd. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Let's share this. Window next. Oh. All right. And here is, this is the Figma board that I just shared the link for everybody that's here. Um, and the very top thing here, this is just kind of a temperature check on the room. The results are hidden. So it, it's a statement. The statement is a DREP should pay a deposit. 
just a really simple temperature check. So if you guys don't mind jumping into the Figma board, you can click anywhere in that alignment scale as far as how much you agree or disagree that a DREP should pay a deposit. Yeah, just just try to click in the anywhere in it. Yep, and there you go. And it'll it'll register that people voted once they once they voted. And we're just gonna let we're just gonna let that hang out there. Everybody's just gonna vote, and we'll take a look at where where our results ended up. I'm on mobile and it's not letting me do it. Mm -hmm. I do not think that's okay. I'll get on the desktop and do it. Yeah, if you don't mind, yep. Yeah, it's probably probably a little hard to work on Figma from from mobile. So sorry for anybody that's participating and not uh not able to to work on the board from mobile. Should we not discuss the pros and cons first, or are we just kind of getting a temperature for the room? This is a temperature check, Tom. So, you know, that's that's the the whole idea of, of this. I mean, we the way we're having the discuss so far, the way the discussions have been around the SIP has been, well, if this happens, this is where we want it to be. It's we can have the discussion as to whether or not it should happen. And that's kind of why I wanted to take the temperature check. I wanted to see if you're if you're absolutely opposed to the DREP having a deposit, by all means, you know, that's that's what that's part of this today. Um, because that that would mean that any deposit's too much. And I'm, you know, that's okay. If that's if that's where you stand, that's where you stand. Yes, we got looks like we got four voters so far. Anybody else that's available that, that can vote, it'd be, you know, it's really appreciated if anybody can can take the time there. Yeah, the more people that participate, the more um the more kind of awesome these things are. It it really is. And that's you know, that's that's what my hope is, is that we can have more of these kind of discussions um in town hall. Um, and Tommy, if you go, if you go into the alignment scale there and click anywhere in the alignment scale, this is as far as whether you strongly disagree, strongly agree, or, you know, whichever, just wherever you land and just click in there and it gives you your, um, it gives you your vote. So, and the, you know, so I guess the best way for me to put it is, is that the more people that participate this way the more impact we have as a as a community on the sip i am watching changes happen as we speak if you're watching the the, the sip conversations is literally saying oh that's great we should add that and you know it, it happening and you know on a regular basis between the sip editors and the community so i'm really hoping that that we're going to provide something meaningful back to the to the community with uh, with today's discussion so, all right. So we've got there's there we got five of us there out of um, out of seven or so. Yeah, looks like it. So, um, Lloyd, will you drop that link, uh, the Figma link, back in chat again when I reconnect it? Yeah, I'll sure. You. Let me. Yeah, I'll re. I'll drop the link one more time here. So here's the. Oops. Let me. So here's the Figma link for anybody that hasn't been able to participate yet. So um, again, we are we are just doing a temperature check. Should a D, a D rep should pay a deposit? I strongly agree. I strongly disagree. Or somewhere in between. Um, if you haven't joined the Figma board, I'd really appreciate it if you could join um, and uh, and add your voice to the Figma board here. And then we're uh, in a few more minutes. We're going to move on to. Uh, another exercise within 
you know, within the space here. If you are anonymous, I believe you do have to log in in order to vote. So you might just want to do a quick login in order to, to vote. Should be relatively simple. All right. Since I see a couple of anonymous, we'll leave those couple of anonymous for a minute and All right, so now I will go ahead. Let's re let's reveal our temperature check and see where we're at, guys. So, we while we do have a strong disagreement uh, on the scale, that there should not be a uh, a vote. We do we've got a lot of agreement, but there should be. Boy, so we can should... see your chat, your meeting chat. You can see my meeting chat. You're, so you're oh, not. Never mind. My bad. That's my screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. You should be seeing the the Figma board up on the. <laughs> All right. Things may break. So, but me, I'm broken. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. So we've got we've got a pretty strong consensus that there should be a uh, should pay a deposit. And so what I'd like to do is we're going to move into deeper into the exercise. It's actually a relatively simple thing to oh where did my there we go oh Lloyd I've got I've got two on there that one on the ass end that's me but I got another one well we okay. haven't had the arguments either for either situation so if we just say oh we have consensus that we it's like um no we're... I can misinform 20 people that the sky's blue and say well we have consensus that the sky's green so let's right. move on yeah it's so like, the sky's it... green guys Right. Well, it's 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 actually only consensus of the people in this room. And that is, you know, it, it was it's, again, just a temperature check. It, this is you know, this is everything we're doing is non-binding. Um, I think that's the most important thing to understand in this space is that this is this is non-binding. Um, we're all trying to to share our voices, share our opinions. Uh, and and so that's what we that's the result that we yeah. have right now is that you know we've got a we've got a consensus in this in this well, room i don't that, think we have a consensus we don't have consensus this, no. i think there's a, i think we have a majority a we don't have consensus okay a majority i don't think we have, sure. think we have either i think we have a lot of nuance in this range okay you know because oh. uh, it's range that that one on the end is it's a i don't know where that came from maybe i don't know if i have another window open but i don't know <laughs> kyle's Kyle's uh yeah, yeah, I, I'm more towards the green that's 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 my over intent. here and that's fine and you know so we'll you know whatever cause that to you know to to be there we you know it is what it is um things may break so and this is what we're going to do next I'm going to bring us down to this next area here this is similar to the uh the way we did the did stuff in Longmont we there was basically a question or a you know a topic and we were all just asked to put a yellow sticky note on the board so if you guys don't mind down at the bottom of your figma bar there's a yellow sticky note and you can drag a sticky note out it'll put your name on it too and then you know this is this is the there's there's two questions in a row we're going to do we're going to say what how much is too little and how much so we're looking for a bottom of the range if you go below this number thanks chris for going pink instead of yellow i see i see you i got you man uh I'm not a, I'm not a all right yeah, I'm a <laughs> no big deal i'm playing um you put you know your you determine to you what is too little and then we're going to go on the opposite side and we're going to say what is too much what number is too high that it's absolutely out of the question so well, let's start with how much is too little and we're going to just see roughly where if we again if we have something in a range where people come to a number that that is similar they get it back 
if they yeah this is a deposit that is a great thank you aunt that's a great point this is a deposit it's not a fee um i know some of the early stuff that came out was saying that this might have been a fee um but you know it's this is more like this is a deposit that you return so this is like a stake pool registration deposit this is exactly According to the SIP, this is exactly like a stake pool registration. Oh wow! Um, so it's yeah. returned is, if, if the so it. I'll set that back. Thanks. Registered. Are you it. stealing my thing? Yeah. <laughs> so the easiest way to, to yeah, there you go. Yeah, I was gonna say the easiest way to do it is to. <laughs> And so the next thing is, is if you do notice that you are near other people's number, you can drag your uh, sticky note over near the other people's number. Now, and what event would have to happen for this D rep to lose this deposit? Like There's what would have to happen? There's Nothing? no way to lose the deposit. You simply oh, you retire you your certificate and you get your deposit back, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So, so the idea is what prevent chain bloat. It, it is um, because the attack the attack vector is is that if the if the fee was one or deposit was one ADA, then you could create a whole bunch of one ADA wallets and and be and vote with a whole bunch of one ADA wallets. And you know, it, 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 programmatically, right? Just write a, just write a code that that manages your voting, and and cause massive chain bloat. Right. So you're saying basically we have to have a, a system of dereps. That means that people say from the, say looking the average here is like anywhere from five hundred. That's the too little range, right? Yeah. So with the question, how much is too little? Five hundred days is too little. Let's say we're in the next bull run, right? And Ada's. Two dollars each, reasonable expectation. Could go up to ten, but two dollars each. Sure. Um, your average person in, um, say Nigeria or the Dominican Republic, um, they can't afford to be a dira. They're they fuck those guys. They uh, they do not get to participate in governance in that way <laughs> because of the price disparity of ADA. That makes sense, right, guys? Like we don't want to be a blockchain well, for everyone. We don't want to be a blockchain for the few, right? Well, I had, I had a solution. Or is this Cardano? Te technically, like. Is it possible that where we could do a multi sig on the deposit? So it is. Like, like, okay, so what's the problem? So that's the first. The first thing is there that this is one. These were the two things that they that was that point has been brought up pretty dramatically, and the the two counters to that that were given so far. One is is that it, there is a script address that is it listed in the new thing, so you could pool your deposits together and vote as a community. That is one. Uh, the other is that you um, that the this number's tunable. So it does not have to remain at this level. And and the part of the feedback time that we could potentially add here is that what if this deposit is is not a set amount of ADA, but oh. ADA tied to some value, whatever even that worse. value is. Even worse. So, well. Um, well, I mean, you, all right, let's we tie it to a an old world, you know, state a nation state currency, right? So now you say, okay, the people of uganda can only vote based on what the dollar's worth today and whether they reach that threshold in their ADA, right and if that the fluctuation of that value now impacts their ability to participate in governance right. like the, again short point what would you stabilize against you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't have a fee in the first place it's absurd well, well what but it's got to work and, and yeah, well, then let the chain scale. Are we going to say, oh, well, I'm sorry, our blockchain doesn't scale for that many transactions? That's pathetic. So, what's the point of the deposit? Is it to stop scammers from coming in and becoming D reps, or what's the point of this deposit? Well, my understanding is the point of the deposit is that you have to have a certain amount to stop like someone creating a million wallets. And then using a million wallets to vote on chain. Well, that the problem then becomes okay, how expensive do we make it? How many people do we disenfranchise in exchange for security? 
And I don't think that's a question should, we should be asking. I think that there are lots of very technically minded people that can probably figure out a way to do voting or the registration of voting, perhaps, I don't know, on a side chain rather than on the main chain, for example, rather than just going, oh, yeah, let's put it all on the on the chain. Oh, no, we've got this massive congestion. All right, what we'll do is we'll make 20% of the world not able to afford to participate in governance. That's pathetic. Come on, we're better than that, surely. Surely. Well, this And this is what makes this discussion interesting, and this is exactly why having it and having it in the open and being able to present this as a work product back to people that are building the uh, that are building the SIP and and editing the SIP rather, you know, it's gonna it will it can help guide the discussion. Now I will say that there's discussion it has been around the possibility of using a side chain for voting. It is a possibility. It's one. It's one of many possibilities. So this is the other guys. <laughs> this is the this is not the Catalyst D reps. This is the Cardano D reps from 1694. So um, since the question was asked, yeah. so and and basically, you know, Tom, I'm I'm hearing your feedback and I'm understanding what you're saying. Um, as of Oops. now, the what is what my understanding is is that the uh, we have the technical limitations of the blockchain and we are taking them into account with the way that we're building this governance and i uh, the other thing that i think it's important to note and i've i've had this i've said this a few times uh, in various spaces in the last few days um what we're talking about here is the governance of a blockchain protocol that is that is extant that exists that has users and has community we are not talking about the type of governance that is things like how to fix potholes in your neighborhood or any of those other kinds of things that is a totally different topic of discussion so the people who have to make decisions on the blockchain protocols governance are the people that we are dealing with now. It's not really about disenfranchising anyone. It it's about in it, it and again this is my opinion. It's not it's not about disenfranchising anyone. It's actually about finding a working way to 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 build what we we're calling minimal viable governance. So a a minimal way of being able to govern the blockchain protocol. So you know so Sure, sure. So we're we're building minimum viable viable governance, and if you think a, a viable governance mechanism is one that um, the average person from the developing world can't afford to partake in, well, they um, can. Then if there's all they say they absolutely can. They can come with. Okay, so they have to beg. They have to beg for it. They, don't, they, don't, they come from yeah, absolutely it? nothing, and they and yeah. if they're going to be a D rep and they're yep. going to get stake their voting power to them, yep. they're going to have to know know somebody with voting power. Yes, they will. I did. Mm. I, this is exactly how I became a stake pool operator in Cardano. I came. I'm not nothing. disagreeing with you at this point. Carry on. in my pocket. I'm just telling you, yep. if the, the opportunity is there for somebody to come from something, to say you're disenfranchised. Sure, sure. Well, okay, uh, why are you writing my opinion off? I'm not writing yours off. I think I'm it's not. that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not writing your opinion off. I'm agreeing with you so far, but I'm. It's not begging. It's not campaigning. The... Right. Yeah. yeah, I just yeah. have to take that. Uh, what, what I'm saying is, all right. Tell me out. Why would we not? Can anyone give a fair answer as why we wouldn't want anyone to become a D-Rep? Why we wouldn't make, want to make the bar to entry for becoming a D-Rep as low as possible. If there were no technical limitations. There are though. Oh, right. but, but if there were no, te- okay, yeah, okay, of course there are. If there were no technical limitations, though, Kyle, okay, I'm would you, would you, hold on, if there are no technical limitations, say, for example, the solution by putting all votes on chain, let's say maybe that's not the best solution we've got, and we could do it on a side chain, and it wouldn't matter about latency, would you not want everyone to be able to have the opportunity to be a DRAP? Or would you want it to be, hey, 500 ADA deposit? Because everyone here is saying 500 ADA is too little right to be a deposit for a d rep right that's what that's the argument that's being made here by the majority uh, tom i didn't say that i didn't say any of no, that tommy, tommy you saying everybody everybody, everybody yeah. is saying 500 bucks you're no, wrong that's, you're that's like saying wrong. the same to be a, a, a run a node 
Sure. 500 don't, don't is too much to run a node. Don't make statements that aren't, aren't true, please. From what I can see on the screen, right? Christopher, Session Cruz, Carl Sodomon, Lloyd. Well, Dufan, what I'm saying is Anthony actually not that at all. What I'm saying is at or greater than 50, less than 500. Okay. So somewhere, and that's a that's a wide range, but I, I yeah, think but it should why, be something. Why is it okay it to, to stop a node operator because they can't afford to do it, and it's not okay to stop a, a D rep? Because they have to pay 500 data. Shouldn't everyone be allowed to run a node on Cardano if this is Cardano? They absolutely should, yeah. I just right. I want to put so in it costs you 500 data to run a node. Right. I want right? to put a commercial. Okay. Swarm is going to host Twitter spaces. And mm -hmm. arguments like this are what we're going to want in the Twitter spaces when we go online. We're, we're going to start it. with Cardano over coffee. But today, I thought... Um, Lloyd, this was a whole different conversation. I didn't know this was going to be a debate. Yeah. Well, it, it, I wasn't intending it to be a debate. I, the intention for me today was to try to target a um, numbers that we could use as feedback back to the existing to the existing uh, community that's building the SIP. Right. That is that's what the goal, the stated goal at the beginning of today's uh, you know presentation was. Is that all things being equal, the SIP is what it is. If the SIP moves forward with this thing, then we, you know, what I would like us to be able to provide a number, and our number's not final. Ours is just one or one grouping of numbers that we come back with. But again, this is good. I think that that having some of the debates, well, some of the conversation is fine. But the, but ultimately, I do. I I would like to move through the exercise that I had designed today with the hope that um, if D reps go through to the final iteration of SIP 1694 and there's a deposit, then we've have an exercise where we designed what, you know, with whatever objections and everything that has been here, you know, this is where we feel it should fall under. Obviously we know where Tom stands. Tom thinks there shouldn't be one. That is, that's fair. That's Tom's opinion. There are other people here who have other opinions and, you know, and, and that's what I'm trying to uh, digest and, and then project to Jared and, you know, whoever else is putting the final touches on different parts of the SIP. So that's the goal here. So. And and I agree, uh, Danny, that that letting each each person speak, you know, giving it room to breathe with your with your opinions is important. That's what you know. I I do want to capture that there is a strong dissent from the idea of of there being a D rep with a deposit. It, it it does complicate things that the value of ADA obviously fluctuates as volatile. So it does. I mean. What what is reasonable to me now, five hundred may not be tomorrow. Well, that's right. That's a yeah, good point. Yeah, and that's the adjustable param part. Like when we first started stake pools, it was like thirty bucks. I think was the cost roughly to 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 register a stake cert or deposit. Mm -hmm. um, to even create a stake address, you got to drop two ADA, right? That's a deposit to stake to stake your stake address. So there's some number that makes sense from a security perspective potentially. And and an economic trade off, and as ADA goes up, it, to my understanding, we could always lower. And I'm just speaking in the stake pool perspective. We can lower those parameters, even the min UTXO of ADA on the protocol. Right, right now it's one ADA. Right, so as ADA goes up in value, could we not lower that amount potentially because the network's still monetarily secured? Right. Okay. And, and go ahead. Tom. As a voter. Sorry. Well, one second, Chris. Let's let Tom go. No, you can go first, Chris. It's fine. Okay, Chris. I'm sorry, Tom. I didn't see your hand up. It's fine. No, I was just going to say, as a voter, I would be a lot more inclined to vote, to delegate my voting power to what, I guess, one of the examples that you were talking about earlier, Lloyd, would be like a DAO or something like that, where it's like a, a contingency of people, just in the hopes that they would have some diplomacy amongst themselves and do what was in the best interest of the chain. You know what I mean? So sure. in that kind of scenario, you know, I think, you know, if, if that number is reasonable, I think 500 is too high. Um, but if it's a reasonable number and it's dynamic, I think that's, I don't think, I don't, I think the, the, uh, the, the, 
the actuality of excluding people from becoming D-reps is much lower. If you can have a contingency of people, say it's 10, 20, 30 people, whatever it may be, it, it brings the bar down on them individually. Anyway, that's what I have. Okay. So you guys aren't seeing the overarching problem with SIP 1694. Um, yeah, let's say, let's go on the premise that, okay, the reason that we have to have a deposit is because there's an attack vector where someone registers 100 wallets, 1,000 wallets, a million wallets as DREPs and uses that to congest the, congest the network. Well, in this SIP already, anyone can submit a governance action, which presumably will happen on chain, which opens you to the exact same attack vector that we're preventing here with the deposit. So this is, I'm not going to make a slippery slope argument, but it is one. What's going to happen is, first of all, the compromise is going to be, yeah, well, you know, well, we have to have a fee on the DREPs. And then we're going to realize that that attack vector exists there. And they go, well, what we'll do is we'll make it so that only DREPs can submit a governance action. This is the direction that it's going in. I've, I've read through the GitHub. I've read through the way it's being shaped piece by piece. That's the direction it's going in as a permanently exclusionary model wherein you have to have a certain threshold of ADA to be able to even suggest a governance action. And what happens? Well, it's in the financial interests of everyone who already have, has met that threshold to continue to rise, you know, increase the threshold. And it's an iterative disenfranchisement. Of, I, I mean, I've read through this. and read, well, anyway, I'm not going to go into details on that for now. We'll see that April 1st, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, as it's been laid out, and I don't deny there are some very, very intelligent people working on this. That don't deny that at all. And they're doing great work in framing this particular tyranny. Um, but it's not one that's supposed to be for a blockchain for everyone. So you can't treat this as a um, as an independent event, as an independent variable in the entire SIP. You have to view it as part of the whole SIP. So you can't have DREPs have a deposit because... Again, the natural solution, the only answer to fix the anyone could submit a governance action argument is the side chain. The governance action also has a deposit that then it and it and it will. So that is part oh Christ, of, that's even they're worse already thing. there. Well, this so is the point. Being, they've already made it there. Yeah, it's great. it's already there. Yeah, this is this isn't what? something that's missing from. It's already there. Every step along the way, where an action. It, Every every action within Cardano requires ADA with it. That is the nature of the blockchain. That's, what, again, where I'm trying to roll back the conversation to the fact that we're in an extant blockchain. We're in an existing blockchain that, the, that as the blockchain is written, in other words, the code that is law of the blockchain, is that ADA is required for every transaction that occurs. So... Having a and we cannot make a value argument on people that 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 can't afford ADA. We can make ADA more affordable by changing parameters, but ultimately, it's that those parameters have to be set somewhere and they have to be modified because that is the entire tenet of the blockchain. It doesn't exist without that. So that's why I try to couch the conversation that we're having. And this is, this is about governance of the protocol. I don't know, maybe I'm not, you know, yet I haven't yet hardened and sharpened that argument enough um, because I do hear a lot of this where it's like, well, this person over here can't participate. Cardano is built a certain way. And that way that it's built, and as far as I know, for forever, because that is the current law of the blockchain, is that it is required to put ADA with every action. No one's so, denying that. And I think you've somewhat, and I, I don't, listen, I think you've either my failing in communication or you've actively misinterpreted what I've argued. I'm not saying for a second, yes, of course, there are transaction fees. I'm not denying that transaction fees exist right? It would be foolish to do so. And that is, from my understanding, part of the disincentive structure for any attacks on the network, mm -hmm. right? That's already there. What I'm saying is if you put forward your proposal and say anyone can submit a governance action, but you have to put 100, 10 ADA, 50 ADA, 100 ADA, and 100, 10 ADA, 50 ADA, 100 ADA in six months or a year or 10 years, is outside of the reach of someone with a very good idea or or, 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 or it doesn't matter with their idea shit they should have the right to put it forwards shouldn't they i mean i'm not i'm not listen i'm not 
I'm not going to sit here and wax lyrical about how we should be the blockchain for everyone because that's what I think Cardano is. And if it's not, then myself and I'm sure other people will leave. But I think the argument that we go, hey, let's put a deposit, let's put a minimum threshold on participating in governance at all is actively exclusionary. And we should lower that threshold as low as possible to get as many people involved in governance as possible. Is that a silly argument to make? It's a good argument to make. And and I want to, again, I want to, let's also hear from Tommy. Let's get, uh, get your. I, I haven't read the um, new missive that came out of Colorado yet. I haven't seen that. Uh, but going on the other one, one of my first questions was, uh, what is a citizen of Cardano or a member of Cardano, which was one of the uh, tenants? Um, Tom, you make some great arguments, and I'm in alignment with you. I just don't didn't wasn't ready for a debate today. Uh, I'm gearing up for the Twitter spaces on uh, that we're going to hold via Swarm. But the question as a citizen, if we look at it from a citizenship um we pay taxes somewhere somehow some form uh income tax that state taxes you're a citizen of this mbo that is going to be formed or a citizen of cardano somewhere some some um energy has to be exchanged in order to run it and to run the voting process etc how does that get paid do you put a tax on citizens or do you make a deposit required where the citizen is still, if it's staked, is earning money on that deposit? That's not a bad thing. 500 ADA at 33 cents or 42 cents, whatever it is today, good for some, bad for others. 100 ADA, 50 ADA. I don't know what that number is, but... Does it exclude a tax? I don't know. Both sides are good arguments, but there always has to be an exchange, uh, as we say in Chinese medicine of chi or energy or guilt or whatever it is. Or does Cardano as an organization impose a tax on its citizens and maybe it's a penny, but then you have some type of energy to handle the voting. That's that's my thought. And, a high number, it, you're going to exclude most of Africa. You see what World Mobile Token and Empower is doing right now. You don't want to hurt that. You don't want to stumble and, and cut out that much population, I don't believe. Right. Well, and that's that's a that's a very interesting point, Tommy. And you know, it it is important to note that World Mobile has deposits required to run their Earth nodes, and they're actually quite substantial. They're actually very expensive to run those nodes. It's expensive to run that's their cool. air nodes, and they have to have equipment there. There's no there there isn't a lack of funding for that. The money's there. People are doing it. They're they're building the equipment. We're watching it happen. Right, but there is a deposit to be a a Earth node. Yeah, Lloyd. That, but that's that's infrastructure. There's a difference between infrastructure and governance, right? Like, there's a deposit to be a stateful operator. That's not going to change. Let's be real. And as ADA gets more and more expensive, it's probably always going to be at 500 ADA. It might change, but it's hardly unlikely. When it comes to getting involved in governance, if again, if we are the governance blockchain, right? We want to be as accessible to everyone as possible. Um, to go down the route of saying, okay, well, you have to have this much aid, or you have to have the what if what if they um what if they use Cardano, um, but they say they have the Naira, they have, we have a, a Jed style Naira, and all of their um resources they can have tens of thousands of, of, of Naira for all that matters, but it's all in native assets rather than in Ada. Oh, then well, even though they use the the, the blockchain, they're not actually eligible to to become a DRA. It's like, well, that doesn't make sense either. I mean. I'm not, again, I don't think SIP 1694 considers a lot of the kind of glaring holes in what it's building. And there's a lot in there, admittedly, that says, um, you know, we're going to figure this out later. I mean, not the, the, the constitution is, isn't even in the scope of the SIP. So, right. you know, having a constitutional committee through a SIP 
that doesn't have a, doesn't constitution. Have a constitution. Yeah, yeah, it's nonsense, right? Uh, so and let's move. Let's give session a chance next, and we'll keep moving forward. Session, go right ahead. I'll keep this short. Uh, I'm walking home, um, but um, I just want to, you know, we're we're not. Our community is not from any one place. We're not from just America or just from Africa. We are a global community, yep. and so I believe that uh, for those who. Uh, as a global community member, you're not just from Africa. You can uh, get, you can aggregate um, support from all over the world for uh, whatever it is you're proposing. Now, I, I'm not, I've not done all the research that Tom has, so there's probably holes in that. But that's that's all I just wanted to say. Thank you, Session. Uh, Lee, go ahead. You got your hand up next. Yeah, um, I just wanted to ask Tom if he would respectfully yield and let us move on to the next topic. Um, you know, I, I think we understand where you stand and where a lot of other people stand, but I don't think the point of today's talk was to come to consensus. It was just to get a temperature check. All right. So with this, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and move in to uh, the next part of it was how much was too too much. I see a couple of things here. I got Session and 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 Tommy that both put uh, their ideas of what is how much is too much. So if you guys can again, uh, you know, grab a sticky note, drop it on the on the thing, and let's talk about how much is too much. What is a what is a deposit that you feel would be out of bounds? that it's truly going to be, you know, sorry, you know, <laughs> exclusionary, right? What is the, what is the amount that's truly exclusionary from this, this process? And again, it's helpful if we put it either in a like in an order or, you know, like like we can do it kind of uh, from greatest to smallest or something like that. You know, this let's just kind of kind of lay it out here to where it's uh, we can kind of see kind of maybe even kind of kind of at scale there. There we go. And if anybody else would like to participate in adding their uh, a card to the board to the it's the the how much is too much section down below. And again, all you have to do is grab a sticky note and stick the sticky note up on the board. Uh, and if you have comments, there's some great comments that are in the how much is too little. Um, so if you also if you have a comment that you'd like to add there, it's you know, this is we're going to share this board and share this video, um, you know, to the community at large and and to the and I will post a comment in the SIP that states that we had this exercise and this was the outcome of it. So um, if you'd like your voice heard, you know, in that this is the place to do it. Yeah, Joker, do you have a contribution other than asking other people not to have a contribution? Sorry, sorry, you go by Joker online because you're an absolute fucking knobhead. Lee Yost, do you have any contribution other than asking someone else not to have a contribution? Anything hey, Lloyd, I gotta go. That's, yeah, uh, no, right, yeah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta split nice as well. Right, Fuck this guys. shit. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah. Uh, that was disappointing. Jeez. I know this is a contentious topic and I, you know, Danny, go ahead. Yeah, so like broadly speaking, I, I don't I don't see a lot of value of figuring out what the maximum allowable amount should be. Um because it essentially it, it pivots the conversation from how do we want to ensure what's the maximum uh, involvement rate? Like how do we want to get people excited? Like what is the lowest barrier to entry? I think that that really comes down to the crux of the issue. Um the, the other opposite end in my mind personally it becomes irrelevant in a sense that that focus is on the wrong side of the equation because you're trying to figure out how to make sure that the governance is as participatory as possible 
sure. but like that that's essentially was my probably personal issue with the with the framing that what i what i listed earlier it, it doesn't make sense to talk about the problems if we don't define the framework within which those problems need to operate in the first place uh, we can be talking about the vastly different numbers and then perceptions right. and we may be actually addressing different issues in our minds specifically speaking um what, what is the status quo what is the framework so is the framework within the existing structure and i gave i did you were i know you came in late danny i gave that early on i actually went through a whole <laughs> like 20 minute no it's okay i went through a whole 20 minute presentation on what it was i didn't i do know you came in late so you didn't have the benefit of seeing that but that was i did try i laid out the framework of why it's here what we're thinking what you know what is needed and why you know people came to this part of the conclusion so far to the best of my knowledge prior mm -hmm. to getting into the exercise because what happens is essentially in a conversation like this or you know uh, a slipping conversation like this that nobody's really wrong mm -hmm. because they're discussing a different point from a different angle and that that's challenging and that's that's like maintaining the the zoom of the conversation is important because one thing is to have a conversation what is technically capable today and what are the immediate requirements and then what are alternative options and what those requirements could be elsewhere and right. whether any of those options can actually plug in and what's realistic and then essentially making our way towards so most of the things said here they're accurate um, accurate when you look at it from a, a different very point of view and, and then essentially it becomes talking past each other right like because mm. you're both right but we're addressing a different element and you know that there is another it's not, I don't want to call it the elephant in the room, but like, obviously there's challenges with, with the governance as is, and, you know, there's some iterative approach and it will not hit everything. And now the question is, what are the trade-offs that we're willing to accept for the interim solutions that should bridge us to the, to what that situation could look like, right? Like what I'm mostly interested from a personal point of view is always looking at, okay, five years from now, what is Cardano blockchain like? And then trying to imagine what that capability is there and then reverse engineering, what is the pathway to get in? Because mm -hmm. then essentially you're able to see, because I think five years from now, the, the agreement on that direction is probably much better than right here, right now, when we're talking about different time frames, time scales, and, and then the use cases. So it, it, it's challenging then when it's a, a bit all over the place because everybody's right, but it's not moving anywhere because uh, it, it needs to fit in within within the context of uh, of the process currently. And uh, I have reservations myself as any anyone should uh, because it's, it's, it's a very formative piece of work that is uh, currently happening and then it is still yet to be done and it will determine fair amount of direction for for foreseeable right. future. And, it, and that's a scary point to many because you might be thinking that it's locking you into a certain position and uh, that needs a lot of work in communication. Is it so? What is the pathway and where that actually leads at the end of the day? Right. Well, and this was an experiment for me today. It, it was, I was hoping to have a less heated conversation and a more, you know, here's my opinion and I'm registering my opinion, you know, in a, in a simplistic form on a single issue within there after kind of going over the details. It fell apart. It didn't go as well as I had planned. Um, it, We're still going, by the way. It hasn't fell sometimes apart. Sometimes things break. <laughs> yeah. it, and that's so. It, you know. It, we're going to, I'm going to keep trying to do these. I, I think that it's important that we take each one of these elements and find a way to discuss them, even when they're controversial. Um, you know, it, it uh, clearly there's some, you know, absolutely passionate, you know, um, stances in this space. And I, and I appreciate that. I think we recorded that. Um, I hope that, you know, that, that, that just still ends up having some value for, for everybody. Um, and the, the thing that it's actually, that's what the, the last part of this exercise is. It's down at the bottom. Uh, this is, this was, we did this at the Longmont uh, workshop and I thought this was really neat and I replicated it here. Um, there's three other sections. There's three other blocks. Let me, if I can get it to zoom correctly. I don't know why it's not zooming now. There we go. The what, so what, and now what. Um, the idea here is taken today, this discussion as a whole, what did you learn? That's the first block. So 
pick something that you learned, drop it on a cart, you know, take a sticky note, stick it up on the board. What did you, did you learn anything today? If you did, what did you learn? That's the first section. Um, so if everybody, if anybody would like to participate in that, I would appreciate that you um, grab a sticky note and stick it here in the what area. It's uh, the sticky notes are down at the bottom, just so you guys know, um, you have a bar across the bottom of your Figma and it just uh, the third option there's like marker, then square and then sticky notes. So if you just grab the sticky note, you can drag it right out onto the screen there. As we're doing it, thank you Lloyd for hosting and navigating the session. Appreciate your time. Thanks you Danny. Here, so thank you. Thank you, Danny. So, and the so what topic, uh, as we're moving forward, the so what is, um, what would you, um, what it, what did you take away from the lesson? What is your feelings? What is your, uh, how, how does it impact what you're, you're thinking going forward? That sort of thing. And then the third, third and final topic is, uh, it's a very simple one. What's your next action? What's your next step that you're going to take personally? Now that you have the information, now that you've been through today's discussion, now what? What's next for you? There we go. All right. And I just, I'm going to, for the, you know, for the people that are watching the video, I'm just going to come in a little tighter um, and, and just kind of let them stand on screen here for a minute for. I can't type, so I'm just gonna say it. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go and do some research. Uh, um, I, I found this one resource, 1694.io, that allows me to understand, to read up and understand what this SIP, 16, this SIP is about and, and understand some more of uh, what Tom was talking about. Mm -hmm. Thanks, dude. Uh, and I do see that Vanessa joined late. I just let me give Vanessa a little quick uh, catch up. Uh, there's there's a few sections at the top, Vanessa. Uh, I, I would really appreciate if you would if you believe there's a minimum amount uh, that's too little to be a to be registered as a deposit to be registered as a DREP. I would like to know that number. The second. 
Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, uh, yeah, Danny was Danny uh, posted um, that. So and yeah, we're we're close. We're, we're uh, I do intend to close the board because I do want to to make that uh, happen. I'll leave it open for at least twenty four hours. Maybe I tell you what, I will leave it open until next week's town hall. Oh shit! Next week's town hall, I'll I'll close it. So that gives everybody that views the video late time to have watched the presentation, time to come to the board, share their their thoughts, and then uh, and I'll close it all out next week. And Danny, you have your hand up. Did you have something to add? Yeah, I just going to give a, a shout to the session. If you'd like to grab some of the other resources, Vanessa and, and a couple of other folks have uh, spun up a community resource called Voltaire News exclamation um, mark. And it, it's, uh, it has a bit.ly as well. So it's like bit.ly dash like slash Voltaire dash news. And, and there's a nice aggregate of all kinds of activities, uh, which might, have, might, might probably include this one as well. And it Lots does. of other things to come out from, uh, including the 1694.io by Darlington, which is awesome as well. So, mm -hmm. just yeah, it's I the chat, the, the link. Just you, you said Voltaire News, Danny? Yeah, it's a, do you see the chat? I, I shared the bit.ly link there. Okay, thanks. That's the one. And yeah, this uh, this conversation was listed as a as a to do this week. Um, and I, when I'm done, I've go, I've been trying to keep that up to date as we've done things. We have our space place wrap up in there. Uh, now that this one's going in the can, we'll also I'll link to the YouTube. I'll link to the to the Figma board um, so that people can see it. And I'll put that in that Voltaire community newsletter uh, as soon as I can. All right. And um, so with that, let me let me finish. I'm going to finish scrolling across for the for what was here as the at the time of. Make sure I caught everything. Is there anything else in the in the now what? Nope, that's everything that's in the now what? All right. And uh, with that. I thank everybody for your participation today. Um, I do understand that these that this is a heated topic, and you know, I uh, I tried my best to <laughs> to keep us on track. I you know, I think we I think we got through some uh, some of this today, and I'm looking forward to trying again in a couple of weeks. Um, I will not be doing a town hall next week, but uh, two weeks from now, I will be doing another town hall, and we will be continuing this 1694 discussion. We're going to continue to try and and put some context to each of these elements and try to find a measurable thing that we can that we can send to the SIP 1694 editors to say, here's what this group of people that met at this time when they had when they had this topic and this information, this is what they came back with. So, and with that, uh, thank you guys all for participating and have a great day. Music